Alrighty, so today is axle day on the 850. Uh, as some of you know already, um, I did blow an axle on our last ride out. So I ordered a new one, and it is here. Here's a look at the other one. You can see it. it is absolutely broken. Not much left. So I'm going to try and get it changed out before the snow comes. So we can get out for our first snow ride for this year. Get these out wall twos in the snow, see how they perform. So first things first, I guess uh, we'll have to get the bike jacked up and get it on stands. Get this tire off. And like I said, it is pretty straightforward. Unbolt the A-arms down at the bottom here. And once they're uh, once they're loosened out of the way, the axle should, well this piece should just fall right out anyway because it's, there's nothing really holding it in there. And then hopefully the inside piece we gotta pop that out and then we'll just reverse the process with the new one here we have the axle that we're going to replace it with it's a warthog hd i ordered online it's quite a bit bigger than the unit that we're replacing to compare it to here's a stock one that I changed a couple of years ago this is a, this is a, a stock Polaris axle and as you can see the warthog unit quite a bit bigger when I broke this one I replaced it with a slasher unit which is what's in the bike now which is what's broken it is an OEM spec axle, so it's pretty much the same as the Polaris. But it was half price from what the dealership wanted for a Polaris brand axle, so like most others, that's what I went with. So I guess next, I'll we'll have to try and get the old one out. Shouldn't be too hard, it's pretty straightforward. I guess we'll tackle that next. Okay, we got the wheel off. So next, we'll have to remove this cotter pin so we can get that ax that castle nut off. Uh, the new axle didn't come with a cotter pin. So make sure we'll save that and not destroy it trying to get it out. It doesn't surprise me because the replacement that I put in there, this is the actual replacement. This is the slasher that I did break. It didn't come with a cotter pin either. So once we get the cotter pin and the castle nut off. I'll remove this bolt here holding the entire hub onto the upper arm. I do believe that's a 15 mil. Um, I'm allowing us to swing this out, which then hopefully that'll give us enough room to get the axle out. I'll just bungee cord this up out of the way and then uh, move on to the inside piece. Okay, just want to sh show a little tip here. Um, once you get your cotter pin out, which mine came out in three pieces um, I guess I'll be replacing that uh, while you're trying to get this nut off you can see it's quite corroded in here I don't know. sometimes it makes it kind of hard to get off um, I did set the park brake to help the hub from spinning but uh, it didn't really help so what I do is I I did this last time too just put a half inch drive in there and then you can spin your wheel back on it and it locks it in place that way you can really torque on that nut it should help you get it off all right i guess we're ready here we'll uh we'll pull this pin out and just be careful that when you do the entire hub is going to want to swing down you don't want to let that happen because the only thing that's going to really hold it up is the brake line here and if we can do this without destroying that that would be just great let's just see now if i can here we go enough this, you know this just folds out it's just don't, just, don't know, it just locks into the spring there here we go that's, as you can see it is a fail here catastrophic failure 
I'll uh, clean some of this crap off of here and we'll go do a comparison on the bench with the new one. All right, as we might be able to see here, uh, this is the slasher unit we just took out. And compared to the Polaris one, like I said, it's a OEM spec replacement. So yeah, they're they're pretty much the same in, in every way. And compared to the new heavy duty one, of course, it's going to be bigger. But even, I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but I mean, even the shafts, the ends, like it's all bigger. The only, the only thing that would be the same size would be the... Uh, the splines where it goes into hub. Um, the reason why I went with a with the warthog, um, when I originally broke my Polaris shaft, I went to the dealership and for a an OEM replacement from Polaris, it was close to six hundred bucks. And then they they told me that they had these aftermarket one slashers so I just happen to have the box of the key in it. and those were considerably cheaper like 250 bucks I want to say I, I can't remember exactly but uh like most people of course you know I went with the slasher to save a bit of money so when I went looking for this axle I found the uh, the heavy duty axle Compared to the slashers, it was the same price online for me to get them shipped to my door where I am in, in Canada. They say the Warthog is good for a three inch lift. My bike has a two inch Super ATV lift, so it should have no issues there. The other three axles are the stock Polaris ones, and I'll change them out as they break. They say you should change them all, but I'm just going to go with it the way it is. I've, uh, I've gotten a lot of use and a lot of hard miles off the stockers. I mean, it all depends on your driving style and how hard you are when you're ripping through those mud holes. But yeah, that's why I chose this. So we'll give this a go, and I bet it'll last longer than the other ones I have. <laughs> all right, so we're back again. Um, I had to walk away from this for a little bit. So I got some priorities as a family man, and as much as I'd like to get this bike running, it simply isn't one of the highest ones I have right now. Um, this was nothing short of a bastard to get out, and you can see why it's quite gummed up. It's not really corroded as such, but I mean, there is a lot of crap in there. You can see on the the old one, it is it was a little rusty. It was a bastard to get out too. Um, nothing short of a slide hammer is going to help you get this out. So if you don't have one, buy one, find one, steal one, whatever it takes, because. You'll be working like a bastard to try and get it out. Um, compared to the new one, you can see. I put it next to it here. The housing's <laughs> a little bit different in size. The warthog significantly bigger. So hopefully it'll last a little bit longer. I know I said earlier when I was taking the cotter pin out. Here's what's left of it. Um, that the warthog didn't come with it picking up this piece of cardboard that the new one came wrapped in i noticed here it is so that kind of lightened my mood a little bit when it came to calming myself down they're trying to get this sucker out and as you can see it's kind of dark out now i don't really feel like installing the new one in the dark so i'll just i'll come back tomorrow maybe and we'll try and get the new unit put in all right we got the new axle in i didn't film actually putting it in because it's pretty straightforward you watch me take it out i just started by uh, pushing it into the hub inside and just give it a little bit of a jerk and push it in and it'll seat that c-clip inside and for the outside just i just swung the uh, swung the hub up and pushed the outer spline through you can wiggle the hub a little bit to line your splines up I just made sure I had this bolt handy so that when everything was in place I just swung the arm down pushed that bolt through and now it's holding everything together so all we have left to do is uh, put our nut back on here and tighten torque that down and then our washers and our castle nut for the spine itself now just take note these washers they are cupped they do go one direction so just take note that when like mine came installed on the axle so I just made sure 
I kept the orientation right so I wouldn't get confused. Take pictures if you have to. Just place your washers in. Spin your nut on. Pretty straightforward. So we'll uh, torque that down. Put the cotter pin in. And we'll be ready to re reinstall the wheel. Back together again. Pretty straightforward. New axle installed. For me, the only hard part on this job is getting the inner housing out. Those C clips to get gummed up with mud and they're hard to release. But like I said, a, a good slide hammer will help you pop that right out. All's left to do now is take it for a test drive. <laughs> 